Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we are going to be looking at Derek Parfit's repugnant conclusion. Now, Derek Parfit was a British philosopher of ethics, identity, and rationality, among other things. He passed away exactly one week ago today. In honor of Parfit's contributions to philosophy, in this video we are going to explain one of his famous arguments in the field of population ethics, known as the repugnant conclusion. Now, in order to generate this conclusion, Parfit uses something known as the impersonal total principle. He gets this principle from other parts of his philosophy, and if you want some justification for that, check out more information on Derek Parfit. He's a really cool philosopher. This principle claims that the most desirable result is one which maximizes the total positive quality of life for a population. So remember, this is looking at an entire population, what's good for a whole group of people, not what's good for a particular individual. The point of the impersonal total principle is basically to make things fair between people, is to make things impersonal, to not be focused on the good for particular individuals, but the general total positive quality of life, the general total positive good. And we understand quality of life to mean whatever good makes life worth living. That's a very rough definition, but it's going to be sufficient for our purposes here. Now, this might seem really intuitive. This might seem like something you would really want. It makes sense, especially from a utilitarian or consequentialist perspective, that we want to maximize the total possible good, the total quality of life in a population, and that's going to be the best conclusion, the best outcome we can have, or at least an outcome with a higher quality of life than another outcome would be a better outcome for us. But it's going to result in what Parfit considers to be a repugnant conclusion, which is simply that a very large population with an average quality of life that is barely positive will be considered a better outcome than a small population with a very high average quality of life. If you don't see why this principle leads to this conclusion, here's a visualization to help. So the bar at right represents a population of people. The height of the bar is the average positive quality of life. So the taller the bar is, the better the average quality of life for all those people in that is. Remember, we're talking about averages, so some of those people could be below the point of the bar, some of them could be above it, but their average is going to be at the point where that bar sits. The higher it is, the better the life, the lower it is, the worse. The width of the bar is going to be the size of the population. So the wider the bar is, the bigger the population, the more people we're including in this count of average quality of life. This will mean that the area of the bar, the average quality of life times the size of the population, is going to be the total quality of life. And the total quality of life is what the impersonal total principle claims that we should maximize. Once again, this may seem very intuitive, but it's going to be somewhat problematic. Take a look at populations A and A minus. So population A is just the bar we were looking at before. It has a pretty high average quality of life, but a relatively small size of population. So it represents a small group of people who are living pretty well. Population A minus is a expanded. So it took the same population we had in A, but then it added another population that was the same size as the population in A. That second population has a lower average quality of life than the population just in A, but they still have a positive quality of life. They still are just half the size of A. They're not a negative quality of life. So they're still living well, they're just not living quite as well as the people in A. So according to the impersonal total principle, A minus is actually a better situation than A. Why? Because now we have six little units of total quality of life, while A just had four total units of quality of life. We've added people who have a positive quality of life, so no matter how small, their positive quality of life gets added on to our total. Now, this is going to pose some problems. Why? Because populations B plus and A minus have the same size 
and average quality of life. So they have the same total quality of life. So these populations are basically equivalent. Remember, we're averaging the quality of life. So if we take the average of half the population that has a four quality of life and half the population that has a two quality of life, we're going to have two populations which have an average of three quality of life. If we just rearrange the people and the way that we were counting in those sets, we would end up with two separate groups that have three on average total quality of life. The point here is that A minus and B plus are equivalent. We're just talking about the same population, we're just grouping it differently, which means that B plus has a higher total quality of life than our original A did. You might see this where this is going, but Populations B plus and B have the same size and average quality of life, so they have the same total quality of life. Once again, all we're doing for population B is just kind of smushing them all together. We're bringing those two columns together and saying that now we just have one population who is twice as big as A was, but has a slightly lower average quality of life. They've gone down from four to three on the average quality of life scale. But because we have a higher total quality of life, because we doubled the size of our population, B is better than A, and B is a better outcome for us to get than A. It's better to have a larger population at a slightly lower quality of life than to have a small population at a very high average quality of life, according to the impersonal total principle. But the problem is this leads us to our repugnant conclusion, because we can continue with this argument to its inevitable conclusion that claims that population Z, which is has a very, very low quality of life, let's say a minuscule, tiny quality of life, where almost half of the people have a negative quality of life, and only just above half have a positive quality of life, or at least the totals that we're looking at average out to just barely above zero on quality of life, but the population is so huge that it balances out for that. The population is so large that the total quality of life overshadows A, which is a very small population, but has a much, much higher quality of life than anyone in population Z does. But according to our impersonal total principle, population a is going to be in a worse outcome, in a worse situation than population Z. This is certainly contrary to our intuitions, as we generally think that a small population with a high quality of life is going to be better than a large population with a low, if positive, quality of life. What do you think? Should we maximize total quality of life? What would you put in place of the impersonal total principle which would not leave us with an unfair society? It's harder than you might think. In a future video, hopefully, we will go into some explanations of different philosophers' responses to the repugnant conclusion, and maybe some ways that we can save our conception of population ethics. As an aside, due to rising political tensions where I am, I have been told to temporarily evacuate. This means that I may decrease to posting every two weeks for the next month or so. We'll see what my situation ends up looking like in the next week. But follow me on Twitter and Facebook for more updated information. I can't promise we'll have a video here every week due to possible lack of internet, but hopefully we'll be able to, at least once every two weeks, get something out there for you. Watch this video and more here at Carneades.org, and stay skeptical, everybody.